Hello and welcome. My name is Ian Pelham Turner. I'm Helena Shard. And I'm Vuce Pacharanda. So this is the Voice of Great Britain show on ALB UK television. Can we first of all, all of us I'm sure, want to say Happy, Happy New, new year. year? It's 2023. It's a great new world. It's a brave new world. And I hope that everybody who's watching the show really feels inspired for the future at the same time as much as we all do as well so we're going to roll the titles aren't we folks Yay. Yay. and we're going to start the show <laughs> Well, it's on everybody's lips today. It's a Tuesday. And what does this Tuesday mean? It means it's the finally the book, the book that everyone is talking about called Spare um, is really so sort of coming out with uh, Harry and Meghan talking about what has been happening in their royal lives. And I know Helena and Bridget will be no doubt putting their commentary to it as well. So ladies, what, what do you think about Harry and Meghan? Do you know, this is such a huge topic. This is a huge topic. Um, I know the book's come out today, the long-awaited book. It's 500 and something pages. Um, and we are waiting for an, another little chat this evening because I think he's uh, done an, the last of the chats on the Late Late Show in the US. So we're hearing that today. The book's been launched. Apparently, it's going to be the top book of... I guess 2023 um, the sales are going to be huge um, what do I think about it now I we've got lots to look forward to we've got the coronation coming up on May the 6th um, and it's going to be a fanfare and it's going to be good fun and this is something at the moment that King Charles and the royal family more so King Charles he's out there he's ingratiating himself with the public and this is a time for him um, the accession was about four, four months ago, and this is king time, um, and obviously we've got the coronation in four months. So this whole uh, book and lots of publicity has come at a terrible time for the royal family. I feel sympathy for Harry. I feel his pain and his trauma from the death, death of his mother when he was, I think he was 12 at the time. Terrible, and obviously... He details that. Um, I haven't read the book, but he details that um, in full, um, along with lots of very, very personal information about the rest of his family. Um, I personally feel that's not good. He has overstepped the line in my eyes, but I will pass over to everyone else to interject because <laughs> it's sort of a discussion and we yes. can bring things up. And I think, I mean, one of the big topics is, is uh, how can you bring families back together again? How would that happen in Albania? If someone is having an argument, um, <laughs> you, you know, and, and uh, when I first met Albanians, they seem to have this argument going on. And this is, oh no, this is quite normal for, for things to go on. How would Albanians see the royal family at the moment? And, and how, what would be their advice in bringing the family back together again? Um, Ian, uh, I have, uh, I mean, I will go back to what I think first about Harry, because uh, it is, at the end of the day, it's a family, even though they've got a title as a royal royalty. Um, I watched Netflix uh, series of uh, um, Harry and Meghan. It was interesting to see uh, the um, procedures they go through and uh, their lifestyle, what I've seen and heard in, in Netflix. Then yesterday I, have, um, I watched the interview with the journalist that he has given and I felt really sad for him because I could see this, um, this person that actually is very bitter, he hasn't healed. He did not heal from the trauma he's gone through when his mother died. He might want to believe that, uh, you know, seven years of a psychotherapy or any therapy that he's, he's done actually has helped him but i think he hasn't healed the core of the problem 
and obviously um, in a sense you see like uh, this child that uh, behaves in a very childish way by blaming others but not himself trying to get something example, that they would all come together as a, as a family and they would talk through a problem you know the, it is, is you know but it would be kept within four walls it wouldn't be sort of spoken outside depends on uh, the arguments they have to be honest it's just now we have changed so much because most of the albanians are uh, now quite modernized it used to be a tradition that um, the head of the family get everybody together and they speak about problem and uh, they solve the problem but now you know in the modern days um, is is same as any family you argue you might decide not to speak get a, get a therapy or get over it um, it's just i guess like same like everybody else because i wonder how mm. prince lek thinks about this because obviously mm. albania has its own royal family as well has has it in history ever had problems you know similar to this at all not that they have come out as uh, you know publicly as it is harry that now is um, portraying the problem is in a royal family. But obviously you've got media, you've got journalists writing things here says that they might be true, they might not. See, mm. I, I, I suppose, um, mm. you know, uh, um, Helen and I have had a lot of discussions about mm. this as well, I, I think. Uh, for me personally, um, I think they wanted to get things out into the open, uh, that their, their defence is that um, unless uh, people really know about this, nothing will change. That the the royal family will continue to be, uh, you know, in in the same uh, vein all the time. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, um, is you know, is is up to the royal family. I think um, the the turning point uh, and probably the most critical point and the one that. Um, when I was listening to the interviews mm. with Harry, is that um, he's not sure whether he's going to go to the coronation um, and whether Meghan will go to the coronation as well, uh, which I think would be a shame as well. Um, and I think, uh, you know, what needs to happen is that they all need to start communicating against each, you know, with each other. Mm. Um, because, you know, for me, um, I, I take the royal family in a different way nowadays. You know, they mm. are um, uh, they're an institution, but they're an institution that we pay for. Uh, and I think it's time now for the royal family to decide how they're going to move forward in the future, because there's obviously uh, fractures within all these uh, you know family situations at the moment. And I think you know that the the uh, how you bring them together. Um, through conciliation, um, forgiveness, you know, and uh, finding out, you know, what to do uh, about it, you know, I, the, the, I, but at the same time, you know, with, with my world, I'd like to be a fly on the wall during their, during their, <laughs> <laughs> during their talks. I mean, I, you know, I think it's, we're, we're simplifying it. Um, when you mm. say, oh, when, you know, they're not going to come to the coronation, well, I personally think the way that Harry has behaved um, and airing everyone's dirty laundry. I mean, the, I mean, a lot of what has been said is so trivial. I mean, it's it's almost laughable. You know, little texts and things like that. But these that things are something so I, uh, personal. It is personal. Uh, silly yeah. things, mm. silly things which really aren't of any mm. interest. But the fact that he's brought them up, mm. um, I think honestly, if I was part of the royal family, I would be absolutely devastated. And it's interesting, I think, listening to Harry talking um, because I, I come from a place I, I loved Harry. I say loved because I do feel at the moment he's, um, you know, being quite wicked personally to, to each and every one he's having an attack. And it's almost a bit of a revenge situation. And I can sort of see how because from a youngster, he never felt, felt he fitted in. He always wanted to be top dog, I think, and couldn't quite place himself. And, and he's, he's openly said, you know, he's, um, he and William fight. Sibling rivalry, really, isn't oh. it? But he's gone through, I think, all the family. He's made his accusations. He didn't need to do that. And, you know, as Ian says, you know, the royal family, mm. they work for us. They work for us. But as a result, they don't want to be going into the public, going to speak journalism and answering all these little things that Prince Harry's throwing. 
because that would be wrong. So they're keeping this dignified silence. You can't, because there's so many little things, you can't just answer. And of course, if they're looking after the public, if they're there for us, working for us, you know, they can't be talking about what's going on with their family. That would be wrong. Mm. I personally think, I think Prince Harry has to throw the mirror down and That's stop it, yeah. concentrating on himself. You know, yeah. they're, they're following the media 24 seven. He's, he's looking at every, and every intricacy. You know, mm. the media is the media. Yes, mm. there's gonna be stories. Yes, things aren't gonna be necessarily mm. fair. Work on something else. Put your energies into positivity. Um, it's just the way it is. And I don't think Prince Harry understands truly how the media works. He seems to think at the moment that the royal family are making up these stories and, and it's been spread through and it's going on 24 seven. What he forgets is there's lots of people working for the royal family, households, different households, thousands of people, you know, cleaners. Do you think, um, do you think media has played a part in his mental health um, issues? Oh, I would say mm. yes. I mean, it, it stems back to, to, to obviously his mother. And, you know, he, the thing is, if something mm. comes out, if a story comes out, and it's not necessarily putting you in the best light, you just have to ignore it. Or, you know, work to discuss or whatever it might be. Um, but you can't just take everything to heart. You can't, it be, it's almost becoming a bit self-obsessed. Yes, yes, you know, what, what and I I've think the minute mm. that he can get help, because he's obviously quite obviously in trauma, um, I would say PTSD. So it's gone to the mental health level and he needs to, to get that sorted as the minute that works out and he forgives whatever forgiveness means and he moves on and he carries on his life as he wants it to be. That will be true peace, because at the moment he's saying how peace it's peace. He's so peace. He's not at peace. He wouldn't be saying these things if he was. <laughs> he just wants to be peaceful. He wants that, but he just uh, uh, is acting differently. Mm. Mm. I, th I think one of the things as well is that the, mm. he's using the media. He's saying that the mm. media is the problem. Yet, yeah, and they've done all these wrong things, but actually he's, he's mirrored them. What he's doing now is exactly the same. And I think one of the, the things which is, is quite upsetting from, from my point of view, is, is this whole original discussion with Oprah Winfrey, and it was to yeah. do with the, 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 the royal family being racist. Um, and then you hear a few years later in these recent interviews that, that no, he hadn't, or Meghan hadn't, they, they weren't talking about racism, that it was um, Yes, even, even it was today I, I read something where he spoke so badly about uh, Consul Queen, um, Camilla, and then uh, next day he said, "No, that that's not what I said. You know, yeah. she's a very so nice it, lady, hardworking." Yeah, and you think, "Make up your mind, Harry." Yeah. I hope he gets to heal his core problem, mm -hmm. and he will continue because he's got a beautiful wife and beautiful children. They are part of royal family, and how beautiful it is to see, even for us as migrants, to see a royal family having this diversity of people mm. from, you know, it's not just pure. Uh, royalty blood but you have other people coming mm. being part of a family and they're getting with the modern life um, as it comes mm. yeah mm. I, I, I mean I, I look at things uh, in a slightly different way I think uh, for me right now um, a lot of that I was talking about uh, with Meghan and Harry uh, then when I was watching the Netflix series were, were, were exactly yeah. what I, how I'd been voicing opinions as well. And I think the reality at the moment is that um, it would be naive for anyone to think that there hasn't been a, a two-sided attack, you know, for, uh, Meghan and Harry towards the royal family and the royal family towards Harry and Meghan. I think there's been a severe attack. Uh, it won't come from the royal family themselves it comes from these so-called uh, uh, people close to, to the association mm -hmm. you know and, uh, and uh, all of it's got to stop because as I say I, I think the reality right now is if this continues um, and I think it will continue I cannot see William becoming king I really can't because what, 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 what do I pick up all the time now talking to sort of people Mm. in their sort of uh, teens and twenties who are really going to be 
you know, supporters of a royal family, if a royal family exists in 20, 30 years' time, mm. that, you know, th there's a lot of dissension now within the royal, you know, wh whether a royal family has any value or not. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, there is a value to the royal family, but I think, you know, the reality at the moment is that um, with all this happening as well, um, they need to get a grip, you know, because uh, they're a business. They are a business like any other business. And right now, um, b between all of them, they're destroying each other. Uh, and I don't think that is a, you know, uh, is a good value for Britain at all. And looking at the cost, I mean, it, it costs something like about 80 million a year uh, to keep the royal family. Um, you know, Charles, we hear, is, is talking about turning Buckingham Palace into a museum. He doesn't want to be there in Buckingham Palace. And so, you know, uh, modernisation, I agree with. And I think the British people deserve better than's happening at the moment. I just, yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's like anything. It, when there's um, problems within families, which are severe. I mean, this is obviously quite severe. And... The royal family are not going to comment. Um, it will blow over, I'm sure of it. But they need to, and, and this, this is the funny thing, how Prince Harry says he wants to make peace. Um, <laughs> he wants to make peace, but he, he'll do it privately with the royal family. And I'm thinking, wow, uh -oh. <laughs> wow, that's just, that's a statement. And there was no irony in it at all. It was absolutely mm -hmm. as is. But, you know, they need to have, you, you can't do it. You can't, you cannot just go in. No family can. Mm -hmm. You have to have a mediator. Um, you have a mediator. You have somebody who you trust, both sides trust. And that's how it's done, whether it's a member of the royal family. I know that you know, people were saying that Princess Anne, obviously she understands being a spare herself. Maybe she's a good person to come in. She's pretty direct. She, um, you know, and bright. Mm -hmm. um, but they mm -hmm. need to have something to push together. But I'll you know, totally at the agree. end of the day, yeah. forgiveness and things. Like goodness mm -hmm. me, that they've got a long way to go. But I, I think it just will stop. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Harry and Meghan will have made their billions, and things will just glide over and people will just carry on carry on working that's that's my feeling um and with yes there has to be a, the institution has to be Anna days um so i think camilla obviously her you know she's very good for charles and she's a good woman and i think she wanted to go to the commonwealth and sort of ingratiate herself but that just those comments that harry's made has done huge damage and it does make me think in a funny way, a little bit hopeful that maybe Harry and Meghan are still wanting to work with the Commonwealth uh, because it means they can get themselves out there. So I think that's a glimmer of hope. And I think it would be I a very agree good with you on hope. that one. Yeah. I just said that I think he wants the title, but in a way he says, no, I don't want it. So he mm. has to decide. Yeah, the I, contradictions I, are quite I, huge. I, 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 I think, you know, I mean, we, we can go around in circles because, yeah. yes. Uh, Harry and Meghan have made money, so has William. William's mm. just inherited 680 million. That was the, you know, for, from, that's the Duchy of uh, Cornwall. Mm. Yeah, I so, that. So, so the, the reality with all these things is that um, uh, I, I, I think, you know, where we are at present, I quite agree with you, Helen. I, I think someone like Princess Anne would be a great mediator uh, to bring all of this together. And I think it, it is important yeah. to bring it together and I think you know the the um, uh, right now Britain is going to need every bit of support and help that we can get you absolutely, know absolutely. over the next few years so I, I think we totally agree and I think um, uh, I, I believe in a minute um, we're going to talk about post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, anyway. we have we, we have a lovely video that I want to show, and I think it lends itself. Obviously, you know, speaking about Harry and realizing that he still is in trauma, um, it'd be quite interesting for the audience to be able to look at this video. And I think it's it's quite simple, but it's um, quite powerful, and it explains a bit. And then we can just have a few words afterwards. So Absolutely. let's roll it. These memories just keep going around and around in my head. I feel crazy. 
At school, there's so many people and so much noise. Sometimes I just want to burst. When I sleep, the nightmares always come. So I force myself to stay awake. Did you know that at least one in three children experience trauma before their 18th birthday? Trauma is the situations where you feel very scared or unsafe. It might also be where you feel very frightened for the safety of the life of someone else. Sometimes these are one-off events or sometimes they happen lots of times. It might be hard to even remember one time from another. When a person has experienced trauma, it can make them feel unsafe or unsure about the world. It can be normal to feel this way right after you've been through trauma, as you make sense of what happened. But if these feelings last for months and make life harder, it could be PTSD. PTSD stands for post-traumatic stress disorder. Sometimes people think PTSD is just for people who've been through war, but it's not. It can be experienced by anyone who's been through trauma. In fact, in some cases, up to one in three children who experience trauma might go on to develop PTSD. So what is PTSD? PTSD can look different in different people. Many people with PTSD experience flashbacks or nightmares. These are memories that might come out of nowhere, or they might come when you see, hear, or smell something that reminds you of what happened. They can make you feel like you're in danger all over again. You might feel jumpy or on edge, like you're always ready for danger. You might have lots of trouble with sleep or concentrating. It's also very common to want to avoid any thoughts or feelings about what has happened. You might try very hard to push thoughts or memories away or avoid things that might remind you of what happened. PTSD can make life really hard. It can make you feel like you can't trust anyone or like everywhere is unsafe. But help is available. If you think you might be struggling with PTSD, you could talk to a trusted adult, to a doctor or GP, or call a free confidential helpline. They can help you to find places you can go to for support. We have treatments that work well to help young people with PTSD. You don't have to just live with it. The best treatments we have is called Trauma-Focused hey. Cognitive Behaviour Therapy. If you or someone you know might be struggling with PTSD, there is hope. You are not alone. So that was, that was the UK Trauma Council, yeah. and they're a, a fabulous body. Um, um, and as, as we were talking about Harry, obviously you can see that it, it, it definitely applies to him, just the, the acting out. But it's, um, you can get help, you know, and not just, it's not just for, I mean, obviously as well for young people um, involved in war. I mean, PTSD is, is, is huge, isn't it? And not only can young people get help, but there's their families too. Um, so there's a huge help out there. So I think it's really, really helpful information. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, you know, um, I, I support Harry and Meghan um, in some ways. I, mean, I, I, don't, I didn't see the point in the book talking about the Taliban. Um, <laughs> uh, and I think that that was a very strange thing. And I think he's been badly advised on that, talking about that of his mm. uh, uh, record with them. Because in reality, um, Strange enough, I was talking to uh, a couple of people uh, more involved in intelligence um, over the past week or two. Um, and all it's done is just highlight to the Taliban, and apparently, uh, according to one source I was talking to, the Taliban have already come out and said that they're going to react against something yeah. said like that. Yeah, so already, it, it, yeah. it, it's, it's, mm. it's put things uh, into a strange perspective again. Mm. I think, you know, and so, um, I mean, personally, I, I, um, I did an interview once with a, a lady who, who again uses homeopathic remedies uh, mm. for post-traumatic stress disorder. 
Um, and uh, um, the, the, we did an interview with a man who loved war. Um, and he had a family, um, he had two young children. Um, and he just loved war. And so every day when he wasn't at war, he was a mercenary. And when, when, he, when he wasn't at war, um, every day he would rush to the newspaper or, or to watch the television to actually see where the next war was going to be, where he could work. Goodness me. And, and, he, and, he, and he said to me, he said, that, he said, the biggest thrill in my life is to have a tank uh, firing at me. Um, it, it, and so, you know, um, how do you deal with things like that? I don't know. Sounds like he was on a cycle. He couldn't get off that. You know, whatever. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, what you say about the Taliban, that's very silly. And um, I think as well, because he's done so much good with the Invictus Games and, and, and some of the, the, the wounded soldiers came out and they've said, stop, Harry, we love you, but stop, enough. Yes. You know, mm. you know you, and they've actually said, you've got a bad set of people around you. Who is it you've got around you? They don't care for you because all they're looking at is monetizing uh, your story, monetizing the royal family and, and doing a huge amount of damage. And, and these are people that are sort of like almost friends, you know, so they're coming out and, and saying that. So, oh dear. Anyway, <laughs> perhaps we should talk about something think, a little I bit more we... positive. And, and oh, you've yeah. got a great story, haven't you? What a wonderful um, time to begin the year with a wonderful news that um, a wonderful lady, which I met her only once, but I did not get a chance. We kind of see each other through um, Skype and other events. She lives in Scotland and she is Albanian from Kosovo. Her name is Remzie Zeka Sherifi. She's been um, decorated by King Charles with the uh, title Order of the British Empire. I had to make it sure I said it right, because as you know, uh, it, is, it is the honor that an Albanian a person gets uh, OBE for their outstanding work with refugees, with asylum seekers, and with the community, um, Albanian Scottish uh, Association in, in um, Glasgow. A lady that worked so hard since um, uh, 99 when she was evacuated from northern Macedonia where she was a refugee due to the war uh, in Kosovo from uh, that time in 1990s. Um, she was a journalist and uh, she was a radio producer. Uh, she came here not knowing the language uh, but she just wanted to do something uh, for uh, so many people were there. So she started and I adore her. She inspires me with her story. She's been awarded so many um, other awards for the work with refugees and asylum seekers, plus with her art and culture, cultural um, um, things she has done in, in Scotland. And when I spoke to her, she said, I really don't know who uh, nominated me, which was fantastic. I said, you must have had wonderful people around you that they know that you, uh, it's a merit to get that. You, you deserve that title, mm -hmm. which is, oh, is the first amazing. Albanian that ever got any Such price of, of this. Um, it is, it, it's, it, it's um, I mean, I know a little bit about, about mm -hmm. um, uh, awards and mm -hmm. uh, uh, two references have to be given. Um, uh, two descriptions have to be given as well by independent people stating why someone should get an award. They're not allowed to state this, this is the award they should be offered. Um, they're just saying that, that they should be recognized um, for it. And I forget that there's an authority um, that look after all of these things. So um, it, it, it's sort of something that, um, you know, at last it's a good news story about Albanians. Yes, I mean, it is. What, what, what do you think, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously, you know, there's talk about this, um, um, uh, they're trying to bring in a new law now as well to, 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 to put Albanians back. You know, what, what do you think about that? Um, I don't want to think about bad things at the moment. Yeah. I wanted so much to hear, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's the bad, it is such a good news, you know, to celebrate yeah, yeah, no, no, hard I, I work. And I hope that by the government seeing that um, 
people like uh, Ms. Sharifi, Mrs. Sharifi, uh, has been um, has been decorated uh, for from King Charles. It, it just means that there are so many people that work hard uh, and they give to the community. They get integrated in into British um, uh, law and lifestyles and everything. They're not criminals, all of them. Mm. And hopefully, you know, I'm not a politician and I wouldn't want to be one. <laughs> um, I would have loved, you know, to be some sort of an agreement between Albania and Britain for work visas, because there are so mm. many. Albania, it's um, a young population. They've got a lot to give. If there is no chance in Albania, then just get trainings, vice versa, each country, you know, work together, network and get mm. Um, get to work together as two countries in Europe. We're not very far, just three hours and a half from London to yeah. Tirana. Mm. Amazing. Mm. I just, well, congratulations. What was her name, Mrs. Sharifi? Mrs. Sharifi, yes. Yeah, I mean, congratulations, that's amazing. I mean, she sounds like a, a lovely, humble woman as well. And I, I, we, we need these positive, feel good um, stories. And, you know, obviously, she was somebody who has skills mm. and decided she was going to do something and actually went for it. And, and look what she's achieved. I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? So I think she uh, must have been uh, part of the New Year's Honours list, yes, was it? Yes, probably, yes. So she was Because uh, when awarded. she announced it, it was like, oh my God, what a year to start with such a positive, not just for her and her family, but for the whole Albanians in Britain, but also in, in everywhere where, where are Albanian speakers, people. And it just tells you that hard work, it is paid and it is valued. So it is an inspiration for all of us to continue to do good work. How do, you think, how do you think Albanians think about, you know, someone getting an award like this? Do, do, do you think it resonates? Do you think it, it um, makes them feel at long last, you know, we, we're being seen by people outside our community? Yes. And uh, personally, I would say I'm a little bit jealous why I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> That's always <laughs> next year, Bisha, I'm sure of it. So um, I would just say, um, please, can you put in a word for my work? Because <laughs> you're close to my <laughs> family. <laughs> you speak well, to them. <laughs> well, we, it's strange because I actually had to put in a reference for someone a, a while back. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, it, it's, um, uh, who still hasn't got it yet, by the way, <laughs> at the same time. So, so perhaps, a, a I, 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 perhaps I'm not as good as a, an yeah. authority as that people may think. But you know, there's quite a few people that get them. Um, yes. So there's amazing, it just goes to show, it makes it's really heartfelt. It makes me feel so happy, really, that there are so many good people out there. Because I think something like 1,100 people were given given awards, but OBE is it's really yearly, high. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, OBE. I had to read about that because uh, I did not want to be, you know, ignorant and mm. find out what is that title. Because, you know, we're not used to getting those titles. Not everybody, you get an award, for your a certificate or diploma for whatever you do, but having this title is, you think it's not going to happen to your people, but that yeah. shows by working with um, those the vulnerable with people who are vulnerable, you still get outstanding um, decoration for your hard work, and if you get into um, Mrs. Sharifi Rema, which I call her Rema, um, work is just like amazing so many production so much work with everybody with all nationalities it's not just albanians it's with all nationalities oh, yeah it's lovely we'd love to hear mm. follow on her story yes that would be really good fun yeah. oh that's great mm. absolutely well I, I think our time is uh very quickly I, I think uh, very we, quickly. We, we've sorted out the royal family uh, yes <laughs> not quite not quite you know <laughs> we, we <laughs> But, oh, and I we know, know where next award should go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. For next year, maybe. <laughs> the, 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 you know, I, 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 I always um, watch the awards with great interest. And, um, I thought you were going to say something else. No, I, I always I, expect I, the award I, to come I, to me. I thought you were yeah. saying. I, 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 no, Why not? It's outstanding that, work. But, yeah. but I, I, I think it, it, it's... Um, the awards are, are symbols of how hard people work for the country. Mm. And that symbolic nature is what I want to see in Britain this Absolutely. year. That, 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 that's really... I want communities to work together and 
co cohesive world, peace and harmony, all those things. It takes a lot of work yeah. but, and a lot of belief. But, you know, once you've got that belief and people just go out and they work towards what they want to achieve, which is good. Um, you know, it does so much good. I'm excited for 2023. Yes, I think it's Me going too. to be, I think it's going to be great to you. So... Um, I'm sure we all want mm. just to say uh, a few quick words to, mm. for uh, our final words. Mm. Well, I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to the coronation. I'm looking forward to, you know, everyone being happy, having lots of fun things to celebrate, hence speaking about the coronation. And obviously with the, the, the Harry and Meghan and the royal family, you know, in my heart, I would love things just to, to you know, things to get back. Um, I don't think it will ever be 100% to be quite honest, but you know, we, we need to move away from this. We've got some amazing people in the world and you know, let's, let's concentrate on all these amazing people, not, not family spats. Um, that's not good. Definitely. It's, it makes you feel sad and uh, you just want that to sort of end and just continue. Um, I would want to see more of Albanians being decorated with their hard work. So um, it will make me feel proud of um, just being who am I, just my identity to show that we are hardworking. And those who are, you know, who just like to be naughty, let them stay where they are. They have to. Absolutely. Well, for me, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Heli Strati and ALB UK Television for, again, uh, another year with, with this show, and I think it's great. Lissy, our wonderful producer as well, um, you know, um, uh, the chocolates are on the way. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 uh, I, I, I think, um, you know, this year is going to be a good year for us. Um, I want us to come together. Uh, we're going to need that as well. Um, and I think, you know, that the value of shows like this shows that we can all come together. We can really highlight the values of all communities in Britain. And that is really what the Voice of Great Britain show is all about. So until the next time, next week, we'll say adieu. Uh, and we will see you again next week. See you Stay next tuned. Week. Take care. Take care. Take care.